So, so first we're going to start with our five definitions for predictive analytics. Now I, I do want to caveat everything with, I'm about to say with the idea that as an engineer, I tend to go very deep down the technical rabbit hole. And so today when we're talking about predictive analytics, that is a very technical topic. We're going to try to keep it high level and useful to you as a business owner or a marketer. And so I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll ask for your forgiveness ahead of time. If I start getting a little too geeky with you today, but there are some five definitions that we want to make sure everyone is very comfortable with, and we'll walk through them. So first of all, what is predictive analytics? We actually got a lot of questions about this in our last lecture when we were um, sharing some of this upcoming coursework. So, so the definition of predictive analytics is this is the use of statistical methods and recently AI to forecast future outcomes based on historical data. So typically the domain of predictive analytics is used in numerical data, but also things like categorical information. How do you label a movie by its genre, et cetera? The second thing, and we'll learn a lot about this with our guest today, is data science. Data science is an interdisciplinary domain that's focused on extracting insights and predictions from data. So you can think of a data scientist a little bit like a business analyst, just on steroids, using technology, working with really large data sets, and using these modern tools like AI to extract insights and useful information from data. The third definition we'll cover today is big data. So what is big data? There's a lot of different numerical definitions of big data. The way I like to think about it is if you've ever tried to do some work on your company and you broke Microsoft Excel, you're probably dealing with big data. So big data is really vast data sets that when you analyze them computationally, you can get a lot of significant information about patterns and trends. The more data you have, like Dan mentioned, usually the better, as long as that data contains the information that you're looking for and is meaningful to your business. Data mining is a technique that uncovers patterns and knowledge from large sets of data. So oftentimes early in the discovery phase, whether you're a data scientist or if you're on a machine learning team, data mining is what you're doing in those initial stages to try to uncover patterns that might be lost in an otherwise large data set. And then finally, we'll talk briefly about feature engineering. So feature engineering is a concept that is relevant to both artificial intelligence as well as data science and predictive analytics. Feature engineering is essentially the process of selecting and transforming variables that you feed into different predictive models. So this is a, a nebulous concept, but I'll give you guys an example. Um, if you're trying to understand a population and trying to predict the rate of cancer, there's a lot of different information you can work off of. You can look at somebody's age, you can look at their their gender, you might be able to look at their economic status, you might look at their political leanings, but not all of that information is useful. And sometimes those variables are highly correlated. And if you just feed a bunch of junk into a machine, it can produce junk as the output. So there's an entire discipline in this craft that's dedicated to be very carefully predicting or changing variables that go into machine learning models. And that actually becomes very important, especially when we think about things like bias that these machines can produce. So that's just a high level view of a few terms I want everybody to be aware of. And I promise that we will not go down the route in this lecture on how to do feature engineering or teach you guys, you know, things that you may have learned in college about linear algebra or principal component analysis.